Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial. Today we are going to learn how to create a login and register application and be able to, to login and register a user from a REST API. So as you can see, I have a sign up activity. Let's try to sign up user. I'm going to have username as LAN202. Email I'm going to have as LAN202 at gmail.com password i'm going to have pass at one two and the user and the confirm password will be pass at one two i'm going to sign up and as you can see saved successfully now let's try to log in using the detail that i've signed up with that is learn 202 and password is pass at one two three Sign in, sign in field. Let's see, it was pass it one, two. There we are, login success. And then we have our welcome screen. So this is what we are going to learn. Uh, the API is hosted at API landed.net. As you can, you can just come here and see the list of users. There we are, there are so many users who have created their account. Yes. So guys, this is a free API, you can play with it. Just come here, post the data you want. For instance, I can say LAN 203. You can leave this one as LAN. This one I can leave it as LAN. The email should be LAN 203. Password pass at 12. Let's see. New user created with ID 46, LAN 203. And then we have LAN 202. Let's try to log in using these details that are were created within the browser. You see, it's successful. Let's attempt this one using post one. We have learn 203, pass it one two. It's also successful. So guys, this is the importance of having a Lestiful API. You can be able to use it on multi platform, Android, web, even you can be able to test it. So this, all this data is being saved in MySQL database. But the purpose of this tutorial is to show you how you can be able to configure Retrofit, you can be able to design your login, register screen, and you can be able even to post and listen data from REST API, and even get data from post or from RESTful API. So let's get started. Okay, one more thing is that uh, using Retrofit, you can be able to console and get what data you just posted, and even console the response from a REST API. Let's create a new project. I'm going to create an empty project. I won't concentrate much on the design. So I'm going to call it user. I'm using Java, but uh, if you guys want me to do using Kotlin, just comment below. And I will also do it using Kotlin. I've divided this tutorial to three parts. Let me explain. So the part is actually using REST API. REST API. So the first part uh, will be designing, logging, register dashboard screen. And then we are going to configure it with it. And finally, we are going to authenticate and create user. So let's get started with the first part. I'm going to add some dependencies. As I have said, I won't concentrate much on the design since uh, I believe maybe you could be having a login and register screen. So I'm going just to copy my dependencies here. So we need this one, material design. I'll leave this code in the description where you can go and get it. The link where you can go and get this code. I'm also going to have a compact. It's already added. So I just need this one. Sync your project. So after adding material, the next thing that I'm going to do is to create two activities. The first one, oops. I'm going to create empty. The first one should be activity login. And the other one, I'm going to call it activity register.
So I have colors that I'm using. I'm going to change the colors that come to the default and replace it with the colors that I'm using. So I'm going to copy this one, just paste it to replace my colors. I'm also going to edit the design to no action bar. Then within uh, the drawable folder, I'm going to create a background color. You see, uh, in our demo activity, we have this loud button. So that's what I'm going to, to copy from my drawable folder. So I'll leave a link where you can learn how to create this type of button that is how that have loaded corners. Corner 25, 25, 25, 25. So let's copy this one. I also need, okay. Let's paste it here at a drawable form. The next thing that I'm going to do within my activity login, I'm going to copy the code from the activity. Guys, in this tutorial, say don't concentrate much on the design, but on the logic of the implementation. So I'm going just to copy this one. I'm going to explain. So don't worry, paste it here. So let's see what is happening. So I'm going to start with the scroll view so that we can take care of small devices. This constant layout, it's very responsive. I have a tutorial, I leave it, or you can check it on the card and the angle light below, above, sorry. Then I have my setter here. It helps me to format uh, the activity. I have this text as login, which is aligned at the top bottom of setter, at the end of parent, start of parent, and the top and the bottom is top of TV email. You have email, and then you have the drawable for email. This is an icon, so I'm going to copy the icon. It's here, and I have, have these two. So I'm going to copy them to my drawable folder. Okay. So as you can see, we have the email, but for the, for last we have TV email and ED email, where the user types the username. We have the view, and then we have TV password. This is where user types the password, and then we have forgot password. For now, we are not uh, using this one, so it's hidden. And then we have button login, which is sign in, and finally we have TV create account. Then I'm going to go to the register activity. Copy the code from the register activity. And just paste it here. So for the register, we have this sign up, sign up text. We have the username. We have the email, we have the password, we have confirm password, and we have button to sign up. Then the other thing is for the main activity. The main activity, we have uh, one text view. Let's copy this one and copy it and paste it within your main activity. Then within the manifest, we are going to require information that is the internet. And I'm going to change the launcher activity from main activity to login activity. And now I can learn our app and see what we have. So let's close this one. Let's wait for it to launch. There we are. We have login. We have edit text for username and password. And we have don't have an account and we have the sign in button. So let's add the listener to our button. So it's here. So we have button login. And then we have just button. And then we have button login. We have edit text, ed, username, 
and we have ED password. And finally, we have text view, no account. So I'm going to find them all here. So I'm going to have button login, which is equal to find view by ID and ID dot button login. Just duplicate this one by clicking Ctrl D. And then we can change. So for the username, we have PD. Let's confirm. So username, we have PT email, password, we have PT password. And this one, we have TV create account. So we are going to have TV create account. We have PT user email. And this one, we have PT password. Then we are going to listen or click. So we have no account dot set or click listener have new view and then we're going to have start activity new intent and we are moving from login activity to register activity then we can have a button login dot set on click listener have new view and here we don't have any action at this point since we have not yet added let it so i'm going to go to the register activity i'll do the same so we have pd username pd email pd password pdc password and you have button sign up Okay, so we are going to have button, button sign up. And then we have edit it. We have PD username, PD email, we have PD password, and we have PDC password. Then I'm going to have button sign up is equal to find view by ID and dot ID dot button sign up. Duplicate this one, and then I'm going to have edit ED username, ED email, ED password, and finally. So I'm going to change. <coughs> So this will be ed username, ed email, ed password, edc password. So that's all we need for that. Let's learn it and see. So when I click, don't have account we go to register activity and we can just click back and go back to login activity so that was what we are going we did on part one so on part two we are going to configure our retrofit so guys stay tuned for part two of this tutorial